What is good, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Um, this video is going to be a different video. Um, last night, I ended up uh, getting into a road rage incident, and basically, I ended up having to use my gun. So, um, I know a lot of y'all may have seen me from that Busted Challenge video. Um, it's all fun and games, but I am very, very, very pro 2A. I uh, legally own all of my guns. And if you don't know what 2A is, that's Second Amendment, which is the right to bear arms. And um, I'm all for owning guns, uh, responsible gun ownership, let me say it like that. I'm all for protecting yourself and your family and people around you. With that being said, I just wanna go ahead and hop into this video because I don't wanna make it too long. But I also do have footage too from the incident because it happened like right outside of a federal building. So uh, one of the federal officers was cool enough to record it on his phone and send it to me. So I do have footage from the shooting so you'll be able to see it all. So this story begins with me meeting up with my cousin. Um, I was supposed to be meeting up with my cousin and his wife uh, at the Omni in downtown Dallas uh, to celebrate her birthday. For those who don't know, I live in Fort Worth. So downtown Dallas is about a 45 minute drive. So on my way there, I'm maybe like about five minutes away. I'm like just exiting into downtown Dallas. Um, a dude cuts me off. so. I like hit my high beams, honk my horn, and that's pretty much the rest of it, right? Wrong. So the dude just slams on his brakes. He's driving like this Ford F-150, like older model Ford F-150. And um, he just slams on his brakes, like trying to intentionally get me to hit him. So I'm like, bro, like what the, like, what the fuck is this dude doing? So from there, I like try to get, like he's like weaving and stuff like that and I'm trying to get around him and he's like basically taking up the whole way so I, he's not letting me around and basically so I act like I'm going left and I'm in my car so as he starts to go left I like jerk right and then like speed past him so then we pull up to this light and he's in the left lane I'm in the right lane and so the dude basically he don't have the passenger side window down but he has his window down and he says do you want to die motherfucker? And this is a Hispanic guy, by the way. So I'm like, I know he didn't just say what I think he just said. So then the dude, I'm like, and so I'm like, what the fuck are you doing? So the dude like kind of reaches over and tries to roll down a passenger uh, window because you know, it's like the little manual joint. So he tries to roll down the passenger side window and he like cracks it a little bit. And he's like, you want to die motherfucker? I'll kill you nigga. And I'm like, what the fuck? So, you know, that's all you gotta say to me. So. I immediately hit my glove compartment box and take my gun out and I put it on the passenger seat, you know, just in case. So at this time, as soon as I take my gun out and put it in the passenger seat, as soon as I take my gun out and put it in the passenger seat, um, the light turns green. So I ended up making that right hand turn. This dude literally turns from the left hand lane into the right hand, I mean, you know, to make that right hand turn too. And then he tries to hit my car. So he did kind of hit my car. He hit it like towards the front driver's side bumper or whatever. And then I pretty much weaved and I ended up hitting a curb, which kind of gave my one of my tires, my passenger side front tire a road rash or whatever. So I hit the curb and so, then of course I slow my car down and I stop it and I get out to kind of look at the damage to see like how bad the damage is. And so then that's when the video starts, right? You'll see me outside the car and um, I'm gonna just let the video play just so you guys can see it. And then I'm gonna, you know, run it back so you guys can get a play by play. All right, so check this out. Crazy, right? I already know. What the video starts is you'll see me on the front side of my car where that little mouse arrow is. Um, one of the federal officers was cool enough to give me the footage again. So shout out to him. I appreciate it. But this is in front of a federal building. So you see me in the front of my car. I'm looking at the damage to my car, you know, at the front, the front driver's side, like I said. And then if you look at the top right hand side, you see this truck hitting this aggressive ass U-turn, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and play a little bit of it right now. So, 
after he hit this U-turn, you start to see me. I look back because I hear his tire screeching, right? So you see me look back, of course, and if I zoom in, you will start to see me reaching up under my shirt. So one thing about me is, once I got out of the car to look at the damage, because I knew he was still in front of me, because at first I thought he was gonna pull over and be on some like, hey, you hit me, I hit you, we exchange information, or I call the police, whatever, and then it's just that. But the dude hits like an aggressive ass U-turn, and I'm like, I still got it in my mind, he said, do you want to die, motherfucker? And then he started reaching up on his passenger seat. So when I got out of my car to go look at the damage, I took my gun out and I put it up under my shirt. So that's one of the reasons why it's very important. I tell everybody, please get your license to carry because you never know where shit like this can happen. All right. So in Texas, we do have license. Uh, we do. We are able to carry guns, um, you know, out in the open or concealed. I recommend carrying a concealed because if a bad guy comes in and decides to start shooting people, guess who's the first person he's gonna shoot? The person with the gun, right? So, um, I had my gun concealed under my thing or whatever, just to, you know, just in case. You know, I, I'd rather have it and I need it than need it than not have it. So, I look back, I'm reaching up under my shirt at this time, and then you'll start to see me back up, right? Because, of course, I see his truck driving, you know, kind of erratic and shit. So then I get behind my car, and at this time, I didn't already lifted my gun because, you know, he got he got his he got his window down, and so I'm starting to like it pretty much engage him. So I'm like, all right, so you know, if something were to happen, I already got my gun up and out, and now I can just start shooting. So as I get towards the back passenger side of my car, I start to see him stick something out of the window, and. That came out to be, uh, I saw something shiny, let me say that. I saw something shiny, and in my mind, only there's only one thing that shiny thing can be, and it can be like a chrome or you know, a stainless steel gun. So with that, I pull the trigger, boom, I'm sh I shot one time, right? So if you zoom into the truck, and I'll play it, if you look at the front passenger side window, you will see that dust come off where I shot, pretty much where I shot at. Um, and I'm pretty much aiming for them. I'm not, these ain't warning shots. I'm, I'm gonna eliminate this threat. So you'll see the dust come off the front passenger side window right there. And then that's when I start to walk forward. Now, in this video, you'll start seeing me walk forward and you'll start to see him slow down. My intention isn't to kill this guy. All right, and let me just put that out there right now. My intention isn't to kill this guy. It's to neutralize the threat in a sense. So. Of course, I still got my gun up and out, but I just start, notice, I just start running towards the car shooting, right? I'm, in all honesty, one, I'm checking them, one, make sure this dude is okay and to render aid. You know, if I got to call the police or call, you know, an ambulance for him because I just shot him, right? So, you know, I start walking forward and I see the truck start to slowly inch, you know, forward and everything like that. And then I see it coming to, the, to a stop. And then... If you look right there, you'll see him stick his arm out the window with this shiny gun. That's when I realized it was a gun. And of course, you still see me. I still got my gun up. I still got my arms out. I'm like walking towards, but I stop. And then I start bagging up and start shooting. You start seeing me let off those last two shots. And that's where the video ends at. Um, I let off... I think I let off a few more shots prior to that. Um, you just can't see the muzzle flash. You only, I think you only see like two muzzle flashes on this. But um, but yeah, man, like this is this is a crazy situation. Um, I pray that nobody don't like ever has to go through the situation. But I'm pretty sure that we've all seen like you know shit on the news where somebody cuts somebody off and then the other person kills that person. Um, I'm gonna keep a gun on me 24/7. I don't I don't care. You know, I, I, I'm not going to be a victim. If it's going to be them or me, it's definitely going to be them. So, lesson learned is always try the best, the best, um, the lesson in this is avoidance. But if you can't avoid this type of situation, then the next best thing to do is defend yourself. Um, because think about it in this situation. What if I didn't have my gun, 
right? Because I didn't point my gun at him until he hit the U-turn and, you know, came back to, to pretty much shoot me because the first shot, I thought I seen a gun. I didn't know for sure if it was a gun, but I thought I seen a gun. But every shot after that, of course, I was, okay, yeah, this is a gun. He is trying to shoot me. But think about if I didn't have my gun, right? He hit a U-turn. I'm sitting up here looking at my the damage on my car. And he shoots up my whole car. He shoots me. I'm laying, bleeding out in the middle of the street, whatever. And, and that, and that could have just been that. But because I had my gun, one, he didn't even get a shot off. So, you know, but he had ill intent. And there's no way I could have avoided this situation. Um, you know, I tried to turn... He turned with me, hit my car, got me to pull over, and then he tried to engage me. You know what I'm saying? Then he tried to, you know, shoot me. So, and the crazy part about it is he cut me off. That's And that's the that's the part that baffles the hell out of me. He cuts me off. I don't cut him off. Because, you know, normally if you cut somebody off, then they try to get in front of you and hit their brakes. He cut me off. I huff my horn and flicker my lights. So, I don't, like, you know, and sometimes you really just can't fix stupid. You got some people that's just like really um like hell bent and they just raise different they wire different however you want to say it but yeah this is this is a crazy situation also um you know after this situation i caught i pulled my car over to the side put my hazards on and then of course that's when you see the video that you're looking at now um you know i got they i called the police and shout out to dallas police um i feel like they handled it well um, they got a lot of calls in about me. Of course, I called myself, but they got a lot of people that called in and it was like, it's an active shooter. So they got it like pretty much a person in downtown shooting their cars and shit. And of course, it was more to the story, but good thing is I called it in. Second thing is I waited for the police um, and I also, you know, unloaded my firearm and made it safe, put it in the passenger seat and then I locked my car doors. So when the police came, I didn't have my gun on me. I had it, it was in the car. And so, you know, I started explaining um, the federal police officer that was inside this federal building where I got this footage from. Um, he was there too, and he like, hey, I got the footage of everything that happened. So if you guys want to see it, which it helped me tremendously because of course, if somebody hits my car, that's technically a hit and run um, on some road rage shit. And on top of that, he brandished a firearm, which was, uh, it's considered deadly conduct in the state of Texas. But, yeah, shout out to the, uh, the Dallas police. They they handled it well. They didn't, you know, hem me up and all shit like that. They didn't put me in cuffs or anything. You know, I explained to them. Uh, and, and that's I feel like that's one of the biggest things that we need to do as um, speaking to all black people. Um, you can be upset. You can be emotional about certain situations. But learn how to speak and articulate, you know, articulate things without being so emotional. Because the more emotional you get, the more, you know, police start to feel uneasy and then that's when shit goes downhill. After that though, crime scene people came and took pictures. Um, then I went into, um, uh, I had to follow the police down to the police station where I had to speak with a detective that's gonna be covering the case. Um, they did take my gun. So they said, uh, to, the detective told me, you know, in 10 days, if the dude doesn't go to a hospital or he don't pop up dead or bled out somewhere, then um, in 10 days I can call him and then he'll just order a release on my gun and I can go pick my gun up. So that's, um, Dallas police was like real cool. Um, you know, and I just, uh, I, I appreciate them handling it like they did. So um, this whole ordeal took about two, three hours out of my day though, um, for sure. Like two or three hours just out of my day. Um, was it scary? I'd probably say no. Um, and that's just because I've, I've trained for this type of shit. Like, uh, I train a lot, especially with firearms. I train on taking my gun from up under my shirt. You know, um, I train on how to move and stuff like that. I train how to back up. Like, when I was backing up a shoot, I've, I've done that type of training. So, I'm very trained when it comes to firearms, right? This is, a, this is another gun that I got um, that's going to be taking my other gun's uh, place until... I can get that back. But I also shoot nothing but 40s. This is a SIG uh, subcompact 40. This is a P, P250. Yeah, so it's like a subcompact. Or nah, it's a it's a compact medium type of, yes, yeah, yeah, technically a compact medium. But this is what I'll be carrying until I get my Springfield back. But stay armed, everybody. Um, stay safe. Again, the best. The best, um, 
The best defense is just to avoid everything, but if you can't avoid it, um, handle yourself, you know, accordingly. So, other than that, man, I'm good, I'm straight. Hopefully, the dude is okay. <laughs> Hopefully, he learned a lesson not to point guns at people because they didn't stop making guns when they made his. Um, if he's not okay, then, you know, we'll pray for him, pray for his family, and just keep the shit pushing. But at the end of the day, if it's me or them, guess who's gonna definitely have to be? It's gonna have to be them. Um, if you enjoyed this video, I appreciate uh, if you hit that thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel, and um, just know when I was in the interrogation room, I snitched on everybody. Like, I told on everybody. So, starting with my mama, all the way to like, my best friend, the police coming for your ass, cause I told, nah, I'm joking. But be sure to hit that thumbs up button. Be sure to subscribe. I got more content coming. I'm probably gonna drop another video. Um, this is my first video of 2021 actually. But I'll probably drop another video, let's say uh, probably Monday, probably tomorrow. I'll probably drop another, I'll drop a Miami video tomorrow. And then I'll go ahead and get back on the regular routine. Cause I know I've been telling people I'm gonna drop content and I haven't been so. I'm gonna go ahead and start dropping content and we're gonna make this shit happen, all right? Appreciate you guys. Holler at you in a minute. Peace.